Your hands are so cold. I don't get it. As if he doesn't have enough problems already. Now. He's got to battle himself. A lot of himself. Togo not looking too good. His meta power allows him to create lifelike puppets. That's why he controls a slew of Bubai Gawaras. Oh, so it, it wasn't twice at all. Wow. Kill Toga. I doubt Bubai Gawara will bounce back from that. <laughs> now he's pretty much on the ropes already. Kill Toga as a martyr. Obtain twice as a source of power. Am I a copy? Have I been lying to myself this whole time? I'm gonna tear myself in two! It's all coming out. <laughs> am I the original? Is this really me? I mean, there's already a very thin line in the first place. Wow. <laughs> He's doing fine. He's doing alright. He's just living his life. We all got days like that, though. Am I right? Where we wonder who we really are. <laughs> we question which one of the multiple visages of ourselves is the real one. It's nice that we have this relationship at all, that we can have a payoff for some of the scenes we saw in season four where Toga and Twice were raiding the overall compound together and like sharing moments of friendship. Well, overall, I find the heroes more compelling. I do really appreciate that the villains for the most part, or a lot of them at least, are given these very humanizing looks. I mean, I've noticed in comments that there's a lot of support for people like Twice and Spinner recently, and I get it. They're definitely in a different category than, say, All for One, whose main viewpoint seems to be how much he can take with one hand and destroy with the other, you know? People are always afraid of me because they think my eyes look scary. No family. I live on my own. Speaking of a sympathetic look at Twice. Unfortunately, this will be the start of your criminal record. Don't worry. You may stumble in life, but you can always pick yourself back up again. Oh no. <laughs> some People some acts of picking yourself up from stumbles fallen, take longer than others. Yeah, exactly. You're a curse! Never show your face in this office again! It really was just bad luck, huh? I was alone. All by myself. But I wanted someone to talk to. Hey. Did I make a mistake with you? Oh no, that's so sad. And also endearing at the same time. Here's a weird question. Do you think you would get along with yourself if you had a twice-like copy of yourself? <laughs> I feel like I would probably spend 90% of the time fighting with the duplicate of myself, or at least debating, or just going down like the most pointless discussion rabbit holes, and the other 10% would just be insanity in action. I could see it going well, where we crush it and like put our heads together and just get a lot done. I also could see it ending in things like homelessness as we just egg each other on into madness and sort of compete with each other to follow our most ridiculous whims every moment of the day. It would be great. <laughs> Not your fault you were born with the crappiest luck. It's kind of amazing and great that his duplicate is nice to himself. That could easily go a different way, you know, in terms of you inner monologue. Person who's circling the train really wants an easy life. And maybe a way out and to suffering. I didn't realize how many wrong turns I'd made until I hit rock bottom. Oh, yeah, that's how that goes. When I stop being able to trust myself. Yeah, huge metaphor there. If that isn't how that goes sometimes, you know, you want something or you're in a bad state and you start to make little concessions, you know, little tiny harmless concessions. It's really weird how powerful momentum is in things like that. You cross a line once and from that point on, it is often forever easier to cross, which is sort of terrifying. Luckily, that's true of good things as well. You know, like things that are really difficult and seem impossible become really manageable with just building up of habits. And for both the good and the bad, it has cumulative effects that tend to compound. You don't notice that you're you're traveling in a certain direction. You don't notice the progress until you sort of look back and reflect on, on where you came, especially with things like vice, you know, you just do this one thing. It's harmless, right? But then that sort of becomes a baseline. And then the next step, the next evolution of that behavior is not that far away anymore. It's just another step. And downwards and downwards you go until the climb out of it seems insurmountable. And you wonder how you let yourself get in that situation in the first place. And the truth is it, it came from making those sort of deals, you know, letting yourself slide just a little bit at a time. It's terrifying. And I think a common feeling at the end of that is how could I possibly trust myself? You know, like I totally misjudged where this would get me. I totally misjudged my ability to do the right thing. I let temptation or desire lead me down a path that objectively I didn't want to go down or did I you know there's a weird message that hits you which is that you are like out of control you're yourself trying to navigate life but you don't believe in your own self-control and autonomy and you the person who's supposed to have your own back the most conceptually has been perhaps the biggest perpetrator of your own downfall and who do you have to blame you know there's sort of no way out from that it's not a fun place to be this is a very interesting way of like visualizing and framing that with him literally stabbing his selves that were aids in his destructive behavior. Very visceral hitting bottom image there. What a mess. Watching a bunch of yous kill other yous made you go a little nuts. You would imagine it would do that, right? I won't, I'm fine. He looks just fine to me. No issues the here. Doubles I make disappear after receiving a certain amount of damage. Basically when they get the equivalent of a broken bone. Find some people who will trust you. Who? It's the right thing to say to twice. There's been a group on the move lately. 
turns into a business meeting. This was always a recruitment. The more I see him twice, the more I think like, he's not actually a great fit. He's just lonely and lost. Grab his arms. I guess we're gonna find out if he's a copy or not. Oh, that would do it, right? Well, now we know. He's the real guy. He's not the copy. Need to increase their strength. Are they just trying to like rip her neck off right now? Is that what they're doing? But even though it hurts, I'm not disappearing. Right, right. It's gotta be a huge relief. Toga! I swear I'll save so you. much of Twice's life just seems dictated by chance and luck. He's just looking for companionship, something to live for. You will fear me. <laughs> well, I can use his power freely. I'll show you the extent of my quirk. Yeah, and he actually is really, really powerful. Sad man's parade. You accepted me and I want to repay you from the bottom of my heart. And now I can. Infinite doubles. Sad man's parade! <laughs> Damn, that's a lot of, a lot of twice, twices. A rare miscalculation and failure. Failure? What are you talking about, Redestro? Wait, hold on a second. We're led to believe this group basically is running various elements of society. You know, they've got a media presence and heroes on payroll. They seem to have a publishing company. They don't got like a furniture company or something. They got to use these men as chairs and desks. It doesn't even look comfortable. Not anywhere in this whole suburban city is one chair. If his shackles are really off, he can do anything. You'll see. <laughs> I love how Karen <laughs> sort of loves them. On the battlefield. Has so much confidence in them. Over quantity. Where was this kind of recruiter when I was looking for jobs? <laughs> Most fun parade of all time. But your trauma. Love and courage your trauma. I don't get it, but it sounds like you're on a hero's journey. <laughs> yeah, very meta commentary there from Magic Man. This leads to some weird questions down the road. How will Twice react to the carnage that's in store for the world? In the future we're aiming for. The strength of someone's power will be directly linked to their place in society. I talked about this a little bit in the Heroes Rising movie. I think generally it's not hard to get behind the idea of a meritocracy. I just think the weird thing that makes this all fall apart is the fact that there's multiple levels from which to evaluate merit. And it's not clear that this is really the one and only key metric that focusing on would yield the most productive and healthy society. It comes across as oddly convenient that the thing that they claim gives them the most right to rule is the thing they have the most of. You know what I mean? It's, it's very easy to make that kind of argument in favor of oneself having power now, but then they're able to hide it under like this persecution thing, you know, taking a truth and using it to suit what's perhaps a different, more selfish agenda. I sort of had higher hopes for this group. Like this is not a principal movement at all, right? I mean, I haven't seen that side of it yet, even though they have principles listed as elements of the rationale behind what they're doing. It really just seems like another villainous power grab. They're fighting under the banner of freedom, but it seems like it would just be what is often the case where it, what it really means is freedom for the select few, of which of course they think they are. It doesn't really require any rigor to go down that path thinking that you yourself are destined to be the one who reaps the benefits of everything or is in power or is the most deserving, you know. Increasing your meta ability will be essential. Please. There's no value to life. Looking pretty cool right now. Amount of strength you wield. That's very cynical hey yeah <laughs> even for dobby even assuming it's true what does strength even mean there's multiple forms of it you won't be able to fight for long will you because your flames are consuming your own body maybe you should have stuck around for the rest of that endeavor training assuming they're related Machia. here we go i've been waiting for this although twice has sort of been handling it Dobby Quirk unknown. Details unknown, adding further to my suspicions. Where'd all these people come from? <laughs> twice is really oh, putting the so whole team on his back backs. Why don't you go take a nap while I trim the fat for you? We'll take down the Liberation Army with a single multiple person. Hey me! It's terrifying, it's like a colony of ants. Damn it. Every time he talks, the soldiers out here get more fired up. Is that a quirk? What or is it just a really good order? Rocky's already exhausted. We can't let him get more worn out. What would Stain do? You're the jerk who crashed our big fight and made us come here. What a crappy move. They're just still there as chairs. Okay. I got over my trauma. Wait, are you a clone too? What are you saying? I'm the realest of the real. No, I'm the original. Shut your We've face. We've been down this road. It doesn't matter. I'll put my soul on the line for everyone's sake. Shout out to the twins in Invincible. Who by Gawara? If you make any more copies, Garen is dead. What is he doing? He's turning into chocolate? <sighs> Giant chocolate arm. Garen! Oh, damn it! And it's your right hand. That's your smoking hand. Oh man. Oh no. Not my smoking hand. 
Oh, still alive, are you? He also turns out to be a great athlete. A noble dream, I like that. <laughs> Perfect timing. Let's test your might. Mortal Kombat. <laughs> Phrasing. She pleaded with society on behalf of her beloved offspring. After all, he couldn't be blamed for how he was born. <laughs> this is just a huge target, no? For Shigaraki to disintegrate. She was killed by those who oppose meta powers. Yeah, you think I'm stupid? The government started trying to reestablish order. They dug up her appeal while working Impressive on the political reform. Impressive people to like narrate reform. this historical lesson. While swinging out that arm around. The political measures that were implemented suppressed meta abilities more than ever. There's no point just changing what they're called. What they wanted to squash was the use of power. So it's cool to get some of this history. There's a bunch of things happening at once. Like, it is not hard to believe that there was some real darkness in the early days in terms of the discrimination he's talking about. And as far as the government response is concerned, you know, the powers that be wanting to control things and sort of not taking a critical look at what they were doing until the tides had shifted against them and then sort of saying one thing and doing another. That's a real thing. You know, there's like the actual intent and then there's the, the branding of the intent. And a lot of times they don't fully match up. There's some inconsistency. A lot of times big, big moves, big power moves have to be made palatable. There's a great and common deception that that you see in that regard. What makes it sort of difficult to go, go along with this is that it seems like in the present, at least, it could be a lot worse in terms of the way quirks are handled. It seems like people are able to use their quirks quite freely, at least in, in terms of what we've seen. There's no like overarching ban categorically on quirks. There's just a system in place to try to keep it manageable. And you can argue that there are flaws with the system, but I don't think we've seen it portrayed that way yet, where it's, you know, this whole thing about hating powers and abilities and wanting to eliminate the use of quirks in society. This is totally a quirk society. So maybe this was correct in the past, but it seems like an outdated argument the way it's hitting me right now. Speaking of branding, you know, it's really easy to, to fly under the flag of these principles like freedom and equality and meritocracy, but it's much more difficult in application just because of just the inherent and massive complexities of life. How do you implement that then? And is your implementation actually grounded to reality or is it some utopian vision? Let's just take for argument's sake that this group takes power over Japan, let's say. I don't imagine this leading to more freedom. I imagine this leading to less freedom, very broadly speaking. You know, people who want to come in and like destroy the existing structures often don't understand exactly the kind of vacuum that happens when you do that. So yeah, big doubt. Big doubt on this guy. But do you know what Destro thought? This isn't what a the Destro future my think. mother wanted. Meta abilities are quirks. You see that we baby? must use them freely. Actual Shigaraki trusting twice to get out of there. You must be the liberation boss. And he has no idea of I didn't get an answer to my question. the conversation that just took place though, right? <laughs> Only clone Shigaraki <laughs> learned that information. <laughs> but we have learned. We have learned a lot. This was a really fun episode for me, I think mostly because of twice. I didn't expect that really nice look at him, which led to that really awesome power escalation. The show through this meta dialogue is saying it's a hero's journey. It is very similar to what we see a lot of the time from the heroes in the show, where, you know, a key insight leads to power escalation. A lot of times that being connected to trauma. It's no different for twice. I mean, this, this really was a heroic feeling episode for him, even though he happens to be on a side that has let's say, not the most heroic goals or methods. But looking at him in terms of an individual and not the side he's on, he comes across as being really likable. It's not hard to root for him at all. And I think a big part of that is because actually his motivations are not at all intrinsically evil or selfish. He's just a person who had a, a rough time, coped with that pain through forming friendships, but you know, not having the best options, let's say, for where to find those people. And so he's at the stage he's at, and there's potential there to maybe take that and get out of this life that's not the best life. But interestingly, by extension, I feel like that ripples out into other characters because people are able to give him that kind of concern too, which speaks well of the other characters. I mean, Shigaraki just took down that whole building, so <laughs> maybe he doesn't care that much, but seems like he does. Seems like he cares about the crew. I think that's been established up to this point. And then also we get a little bit of exposition on the history of quirks and where Destro and Redestro sort of fit into the main plot and the, you know, the overall philosophy of this organization. And I was expecting something about freedom, but it actually doesn't really hit me as being about freedom. It just hits me as yet another special interest thing where they have an agenda for their own gain. And there's pain mixed in with that that makes it take on this self-righteous spin. But actually, when you compare it to the stated goal and thinking about how that stated goal could best be applied to more than just a select group, it doesn't really seem to follow. Like, it doesn't seem to follow that this is in the name of freedom. It also is that classic thing of identifying a problem and then using a problem to justify anything, you know, you know, and then maybe perhaps saying things like, well, I had no choice because I was put up against a corner and I have been faced with hate 
my whole life. And so if that's what the world is, I'm going to give it right back. I think it would be a lot more compelling as a case if we were seeing more of it. I mean, I feel like we have seen discrimination to a certain extent, and certainly you can imagine there being discrimination, but it doesn't seem like that's a force that's driving society. You know, it doesn't seem like that's what is at root of the whole thing. You know, that might be there, but that is the kind of thing you deal with at a individual local level. No, I mean, you're not going to stamp out discrimination by toppling society and reinventing it in your own image. You're just going to create a different kind of discrimination, namely people who don't agree with you, or maybe people without quirks, you know what I mean? Or people who lack powerful quirks, you know, those people do exist. It's just one iteration of something to another iteration of something, and arguably a worse iteration of it if all tactics are at your disposal, and there are no sort of guiding scruples beyond, like, power, and a very, very specific form of power, not even taking into account, like, a broader meaning of, of strength and merit. It's just actual power strength, which is that really, you know, the way to lead society? What would be the parallel of that for us? brute force? I don't know. One thing that I think does make the group's power believable, though, is that you can imagine how this would appeal to people who are very, very powerful, who have very powerful quirks, and how the support of those people would allow them to get as far as they've gotten. Speaking of tactics, you know, that's a path. It's like, hey, you. Yes, you. Did you know that the thing that you have makes you better than other people? It makes you special. And the fact that other people don't recognize how amazing you are is their fault and is a sign of a larger problem, and therefore you have a right to rise above these uninformed, uneducated, hateful people and claim the top spot that is rightfully yours, you know, like, it's such an easy pitch to make. And the more frustrated people are, the more they're dealing with difficulty in their own lives, the more that's a godsend, you know, the more they're going to love to latch onto that idea of, I've always known, <laughs> you know, I've always known deep down in my heart, I was the special one. Of course, it's all clear now. <laughs> Where can I sign up? And while it might not always be that explicit, it might not always be to that extreme, I feel like there is that sort of identity connection or attachment in a lot of what people identify with. And I think that's partly why they'll so vigorously defend their side and why it's so easy to put people in a different camp down beneath oneself and lose other things like basic decency and respect for humanity in the process. It's just a force that doesn't seem like it'll ever go away and humanity has to constantly reconcile and strive to do better than, even if it at times appears futile. Anywho, <laughs> before the video ends, I gotta give a huge thank you to all my patrons for the support. We're coming to the end here of not one, but two shows. Both My Hero Academia and Fruits Basket are, are ending soon. So aside from Attack on Titan, which will be ongoing as that comes out, it will soon be time to choose not one, but two new shows for the channel, which is very exciting. Information on that will be coming out very soon if it's not out already at this point. Special shout out to those who joined the top tier on Patreon over the past month. Reina Ahmed, Nicole Didsbury, Robert Traeger, and Darwin Hernandez. Thank you to you guys. Thank you to all my patrons for all the, the constant love, support, messages, love, energy, jokes. Also, huge, huge thank you to everyone who signed up in this period to support in light of the, the copyright situation for Fruits Basket, which was traumatizing and would have been a lot more traumatizing if I didn't have this kind of support on Patreon. So yeah, just huge, huge thank you to everyone for all the support. And I will see you very soon for what is the last couple episodes of My Hero Academia, as crazy as that is to think about.